up everybody it's your boy here to give you guys this week's uh, edition of top boys and trending topics with uh t just want to let you guys know with this video i'm not all the way here like i said i've been pretty much out and about for the past five days I actually was supposed to have gotten back yesterday but didn't get back when i got in on friday and mostly just been sleeping most of the time trying to regain my energy for the upcoming weeks and shit so I'm gonna try to give y'all the best handles on on. Try to give y'all the most energy that I have, and I'm, I ain't I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even have a whole lot of notes and whatnot, so I'm gonna freestyle a little bit of it. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I've never watched uh, Real Housewives of Orange County. What's going on? So yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so let me go. Let me go ahead and. Get right, right quick. I don't, I don't know. The only thing that I was watching on Sunday nights was um, Potomac, and if nothing is coming on, yeah, I am not gonna be mad because that means I can go to bed early. But I don't know. All right, so. <laughs> You got enough time. You see, you see, I have enough time, but I'm not sure if I have enough time. Cause I always say I'm gonna breeze through this shit, and then as soon as I say I'm gonna breeze through it, we be here for over an hour. But we gonna see. We gonna see. So uh, first off, prayers. Uh, prayers up for uh, the fam. Well, John McCain himself, but also his family. Um, <clears throat> I believe they said that he had a mask over his eyes, so they went to remove said mask, and then end up finding out that. Uh, <clears throat> He has brain cancer. So he has uh, thus been diagnosed with brain cancer. Like I said, I say fuck cancer in general, but I know that has got to be crazy. And the fact that it's in the brain, I don't know how much time he has, but hopefully he can, you know, push through and survive uh, or live as long of a life as he can, given the fact that he has this ailment. And also prayers to the family of uh, Chester Bennington. Uh, he was uh, the lead, well, the lead frontman for the band uh, Lincoln Park, which, like I said, that played uh, heavily into my uh, teenage years. Like I had, like when we were still buying CDs and shit, <laughs> I still had, you know, I bought that CDs, Meteora, Hybrid Theory, all that good shit. Like definitely, definitely a fan and. Uh, he has uh, passed on. He actually committed suicide. I don't know if like I've been looking around as much as I can, wasn't able to truly find um, what the uh, cause has been. But I know that they have said that he had been in his past, and even I think some were present, been battling drug addiction and whatnot. So that could have led to something, but don't know. Don't know. So that is all that I have this week for the prayers. Y'all know that I like to get the heavy shit out the way before we sit here and we start cutting the fuck up. So let me see, let me see, let me see. Let's talk about because like I said I don't really have my notes in order. Like again, I'm I'm out of it today. I'm trying to give it to you. I'm trying to give it to you. So Michael Vick. Michael Vick is in the news. He's trending because he is pretty much saying that for Colin Kaepernick to get picked up by a team that he needs uh, to cut his hair. He needs a re-imaging. And now here's the thing. I don't do sports, but I know who Mike Vick is. And I'm like, so he needs to cut his hair, bro? Were you not the same motherfucker who had a fro? Who had braids? Yeah, you and you sit here telling this man that he needs to sit here and cut his hair so he can thus get picked up. Now, I partially understand where he was going. The execution was completely horrible. I think what he was trying to say is look at my situation with the dogs and whatnot and how it was like say he had a negative light on him for quite some time 
but it took some time. It took some years. He had to rebrand himself. He had to do a re-imaging. He had to change up everything just so that he can get back to what he enjoyed doing. So for him, yes, he needed to do a complete motherfucking 180. We're going to talk about a motherfucker in a little bit that needs to do a motherfucking 180, but we ain't there yet. So I kind of get what he is saying, but y'all situations are different. Not yes on one hand. Colin Kaepernick is asking for a lot of money, you know, to play football that could play part in it. But I think it's more or less the fact that, you know, he's willing to stand for the community. He's willing to stand up for social injustice. He's willing to say a lot of things that other people are afraid of because it's all about that bottom dollar. <laughs> yeah, he was a comment. Definitely need a rebrand. Definitely. But. You know, it's just like we, we're not going to sit here and pretend as if, you know, Colin Kaepernick isn't being blackballed because he chose to sit here and speak out against the things. People saying that him taking a knee is, uh, you know, unpatriotic. Well, fuck the damn national na national anthem itself is unpatriotic, especially when you think about it. There is that other verse that mysteriously has been done away with and don't nobody sing because of the connotation and because of how it dates back to slavery, if we're going to be clear. So pretty much that's them trying to take some negative, chop that off and think that people don't remember, but people do remember, you know, if we're going to be very clear about that. And the fact that he's speaking about speaking out against this injustice, somebody has to, somebody has to. And I'm glad that he did. And then, like I said, I was proud that he went ahead and, you know, blew out the head. Just like, look, I want y'all to see it. What I will say is, and nothing against Colin Kaepernick, but it is a shame that all of the light-skinned black people are fearless and are willing to step out and say something. But the melanin, like the dark-skinned bros, ain't willing to say shit. Like, that is very, very fucking insulting. And then regardless of the fact... Like why? Like even if you felt that way towards Colin, you could have you could have hit the brother. Like look, man, let, let me holler at you. You feel what I'm saying? But <laughs> and then the crazy thing is, on one hand, he went. When I say he, uh, Michael Vick went and I think went on IG had this little thing and pretty much was stating that everything he said he meant in essence, but and but he apologizes for it. So then Colin Kaepernick pretty much I put a post up and it was like the definition of Stockholm Syndrome. Now, some people are saying that that could be tied to R. Kelly's situation. We're going to talk about R. Kelly too. But I think that that was truly a dig at, you know, Michael Vick was just like, bro, you a slave, you don't even know it. But, you know, it's like you are pretty much being, you know, Y'all, like I said, we all know what Stockholm Syndrome is. If y'all don't know what it is, I'm just say just go ahead and look it up. You know, go ahead and learn yourselves on this Sunday morning. So I'm just like, all right. And then it was after that, that now he's back on the internet. And now he's, uh, you know, backpedaling and pussy popping and saying, okay, I do apologize. Man, you can go and sit the fuck down somewhere. I'm just like, fuckery, pure fuckery. <clears throat> It was, and it was one of those where it was classy as fuck. Like, he, he ain't go in. He ain't go in. He, like I said, he could have went the fuck in. It was just like, I'm just sitting here and put a definition up, and I'm going to keep on going to bigger and better things. Plus, regardless of how he may feel about Colin Kaepernick, like I said, when Meals, I think it was Meals on Wheels was going to be, um, you, like, the funding, because I believe it was it's government funded. When that shit got cut, do you know who came out of pocket? to help fund Meals on Wheels for those who really need it, Colin Kaepernick came out. Colin Kaepernick even had went so far, <clears throat> like he, when I say he has been hitting the ground running, not just standing up for, you know, social injustice for black people, but Meals on Wheels was this here and it, and it affects people of damn near every race, color, creed, whatever. For him to do that, it speaks values on him and my question is Mike what are you doing with sitting here and making dogs fight come on bro but I digress but I fucking digress I'm trying to see if I had anything up here on my web browser because like I said I mean I kind of have notes up and down up and down 
right quick before we continue into the, the fuckery. How many of y'all saw the super trailer for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood? Because it comes on tomorrow. And I'm definitely going to watch it. I feel bad because I probably won't be able to do a review on it for the upcoming three weeks because my job. So it'll be one of those where I might just have to come back and just like give it to y'all asses on the weekend or whatever. I don't fucking know. But I watched the shit and I'm saying like, okay, Ke Keisha, okay. You know, uh, pork and beans, hot dogs, still not looking at all that motherfucking interested in shit. I can see where Masika Kalisha and her whole thing is going, especially with her being downgraded to, I guess, like a friend of the cast. Because she doesn't want to sit here and film with a certain person. Now, here's the thing. It, ne it never is. But I'm still going to be here for Because here's the thing. I already said, if Moniz wasn't on that, I wouldn't watch that shit. I I'm going to keep it all at 100. If Moniz ain't on that, I ain't fucking watching it. Period. Because, I mean, ain't no need for me to watch it. Because <laughs> that's the reason why the fuck I watch it. Because, I mean, let's be clear. If don't nobody else sit here and give y'all the fucking drama shit that y'all need and keep motherfuckers talking, damn it, it's Moniz. Okay. But, you know, like, even, like, with Masika, whole thing. And I'm probably going to say this in my review. <clears throat> If production wants you to sit here and film with somebody, film with them. But see, here's the thing. This is how you sit here and this is how you catch a motherfucker up. Literally, pay the ass completely nothing does. Here's the thing. In my day now, outside of work, because, you know, I got to sit here and play nice because I'm at work. But outside of work, shit, if I don't fuck with a motherfucker and we happen to be in the same space, and I've been guilty of doing this shit, it'd be a, me with some friends. It might be a motherfucker in a group that I don't fuck with. I'm going to sit here and talk to everybody the fuck else, and this motherfucker does not exist because you don't. You're not going to get my time. You're not going to get my attention. None of that. This motherfucker can come in and say some dope-ass shit, still not going to fucking acknowledge you because you don't fucking exist to me. And that's how Masika could have played this shit. She's like, okay, I'm going to film with the bitch. I ain't going to say shit to her. It, it could have been that fucking symbol. So, I mean, you know, don't sit here and fuck up your exact complete and utter complete and fucking up. Like, you, because here's the thing. Moan and them be crafty with they shit. But again, the best way to sit here. And now, mind you, not filming with a person does help. But that that really works on the um, real housewives type of thing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, get your money. But that works more or less for like the real housewife franchises where you can opt to not sit here and film with somebody and it just is what it is. On Love and Hip Hop, Moan and Me production, now nah, you really can't do that. You you really can't do that. You feel me? But whatever, whatever. <clears throat> but I mean, the trailer looked good, you know. Got Brooke Valentine on there. I I really want Brooke to sit here and use this to catapult catapult her career because I said the girl can sing, and I really, really like I saw it for her. You know, she just fell off and shit. And hopefully, she pulls a K Michelle slash Cardi B. Get what you can get out of this, and get the fuck off the show. Point blank and fucking period. You know what I'm saying? Granted, she had a song called Girl Fight. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no idea. But, hey, she finna come back. We finna see how it is. You feel what I'm saying? So, the super trailer, you know, we'll see how it is. Ray J, I mean, Princess won the baby with Ray J. All right, y'all y'all need to be married for a little bit first. Grant, I mean, that, that's not my relationship. I can't sit here and talk about nobody else's shit. But y'all need to be married for a little bit first. Or you have a motherfucking baby and shit. <clears throat> All right, so I gotta find this one little piece before I continue, y'all. Damn, did I, did I accidentally delete it? Oh no. Now I don't know who Booby Gibson is, but I did see the love triangle. So I mean, if I if I caught it correctly, she would have do that she in love with, and she finds out that he married. <laughs> that shit was funny, like <laughs> hey, that shit. That shit was fucking epic. I enjoyed that, but oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, I mean, shit. I like I said, I was gonna watch it anyway, but now I'm really gonna watch the shit. I'm really gonna watch the shit. All right, y'all. So Tyler Perry's. So. Tyler Perry um, has inked a deal with Viacom to produce 90 episodes 
90 episodes of original drama and comedy content per year for Keisha X, okay, uh, for BET and other Viacom networks. Well, I'm just now this contract is not supposed to like start until 2019, which gives him time, but 90 episodes across all the Viacom networks, but predominantly BET, where it seemed like it's going to be more uh, quantity than quality. And even, you know, some of his work on own, I, <clears throat> like the only show that I have watched is the Have and Have Not, and I'm at the point now where I just watch people fucking reviews on it, and I just kind of get the, you know, gist of it, because... I swear I can't stand how some scenes run for so fucking long where it's just like, y'all want to sit here and ran in circles for three fucking minutes. Well, we could, yeah, this scene could have been 30 seconds. We moved on to the next fucking scene. But again, I digress. Now, a lot of people are saying that this is happening because he had been, you know, at odds with um, <clears throat> Miss uh, Oprah Winfrey. And it was also said that um, Tyler's uh, contract with TBS was up. Uh, Well, I'm going to get to it. I'm get to it. <clears throat> we don't know if he's necessarily leaving. Well, actually, we sort of kind of do know that he's leaving. But we know that his thing with TBS was uh, pretty much about to, was running out. We know that Own was somewhat struggling to have some, you know, stuff to bring people in. So, her, you know, Oprah, Tyler Perry, mesh up, brought in the rings and whatnot. And it seems like... Well, like I said, I've been watching other people's reviews, so, I mean, this has been helping me out because I ain't got to watch shit. I can just go to bed early at night. <laughs> but now that it seems that Oprah has brought in the, you know, heavy hitters like Greenleaf, which Greenleaf needs to hurry up and come the fuck back, and Queen Sugar, don't judge, but I haven't, I, I haven't gotten into Queen Sugar. There's a lot of shit that I just haven't been able to watch. Like, I haven't watched it at all, but I do want to watch it. Well, I think now that she's starting to get a little bit more quality and these shows are starting to bring in, you know, the people that, you know, next month, bad. But that's starting to help her out. And, of course, when you have two strong personalities, <laughs> you know, I can see Tyler Perry and Oprah going at it. And it's also been rumors that he talks to her as if he is her boss. So with him um, doing this deal with Viacom, I think this is his way of transitioning from own but it was actually said that he is moving on from the own network so he is actually leaving to go to viacom and it's being saying that oprah has replaced him with a husband and wife writing couple uh salim and uh mara brock akil so bring them on and apparently they were the creators of girlfriends the game and being mary jane Oh, yes, yes, yes. The quality is, is the shit. And even, and I like the fact that they take time to actually develop the characters and every character has a little bit of shine. It's, it's, it's fucking amazing. So, I mean, I'm not going to say, hey, don't Tyler, go ahead and make your money. But what I will say is if you're going to go to BET, please come to BET with some good shit and not the fuck shit. BET is now resurge, is on the resurgence right now. They're on the up and up. We'll need that, you know, fucked up cootery type bullshit. We don't, we don't need no more of that. Okay, here's the thing: I'm all for the spirituality. I'm all for the uplifting. I'm all for what he tries to do, but we need a little bit more fucking substance. We don't need no more of that fuck shit from top. I'm, I'm being super, super fucking serious. Like when I say BET is advancing, BET is fucking advancing. Okay. When the motherfucking BET awards is out doing. The MTV award that says um almost that oh much better much better but I want to talk about Mr. you know Mr. Tyler Perry's right quick all right now somebody had where, where is it okay now I forget who but somebody had asked me how did I feel about Mage talking about Nippy. Now, I missed it. I actually pulled up the article from RollingStone.com. And, you know, for those of y'all who have not watched the Legends panel on um, YouTube, please check that shit out. Because the way that the person that plays Whitney goes in on Madonna, who they call Mage, is fucking hilarious. Also, you can watch Gots To Be Real and um, 
R&B diva legends. Like, that shit is fucking hilarious. But, I read this shit, I was just like, Madonna had some nerve, now mind you, these were private letters, and these this was years ago. This shit should never seen the fucking light of that, especially because I believe that these are about to be auctioned off. These fucking letters. <laughs> so th this is this is what she said. Let, let, let me see. Let me see. Hold on. I, I, I gotta find the quotes. Um, so in this letter, she calls Whitney Houston and Sharon Stone horribly mediocre. Okay, now this fucking letter is supposed to be is supposed to be auctioned, I guess, for five thousand dollars. Now, she says that um, she feels that she's being punished, that you know, for being innovative and risque with her work, while less interesting and exciting people are reaping the benefits of the roads she's paved. Okay. And then even went so far as to say, maybe this is what black people felt like when Elvis Presley got huge. And going on to say, it is so unequivocally, unequivocally frustrating, <laughs> something like hated me, to read that Whitney Houston has the career I wish I had and Sharon Stone has the film career I never had. Not because I want to be these women, because I'd rather die. Hey, what's going on? But they are so horribly mediocre and they're always being held up as paragons of virtue and some sort of measuring stick to humiliate me. Oh, <laughs> she really did try to fuck out of it. And, and, and here's the thing. No matter what she say about Nippy, I believe in like what? It was it one it was either one year or ten years. But she released like six albums. And Whitney damn near destroyed her with two fucking albums. So the sales that Whitney had in two albums. Oh, she did. But, 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 and, but in two albums, Whitney sold just as almost as much as Madonna did with six albums. And see, see, here's the thing. With Nippy was classy. Nippy kept her clothes on. Nippy had the fucking blowout. Okay, Nippy sat here and sang. She ain't fucking, you know what, see? Y'all about to have me, mm-mm, mm-mm, I see, 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 yeah, mm-mm. I'm not, I'm, fin I'm not finna stoop down to Madonna's level, not today. Not today, because y'all, y'all, y'all was show by to sit here and bring it out of me. No, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let y'all read her for other feelings. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. You ain't never lie. <laughs> well, I will. <laughs> hey, what's going on? I hate when people envy you. <laughs> you know, de definitely run your own race, but sit here and say that they're reaping the benefits of the roles that you paved? Bitch, where? How? <laughs> like, I, I don't fucking get that. I, I really don't. And... Like, that is one of those ways, like, how the fuck is Nippy mediocre? How? You feel what I'm saying? And even Whitney at her, not, even when Whitney was not at her vocal best, she's still better than fucking Madonna. So on Whitney's worst day, she's better than Madonna on her best day. Let's be fucking clear. Let's be fucking clear. You 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 not finna do nippy like that. Nippy never had to resort to sitting here of doing fucking stunts and shows to sit here and sell album sales and concert tickets and shit. Nippy ain't never had to fucking do that. Let's be clear. Stupid ass bitch. I think I I, I really ain't got much like that shit. That, like when I read it, it took me out and drained all of my fucking energy. And I'm just like, really, really. And I'm I'm okay, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just leave this story alone. This is it's gonna make me so fucking upset. And we're not here for me to be upset. We're here for us to all get a laugh and a kiki. Key key. All right. <clears throat> so you guys, let let let's talk about you know juice. Let's talk about the juice man for a minute. Whitney ain't never had to do none of that shit, but sit there and sing. I'm a, just, <laughs> like honestly, like 
that shit, like, it took me out. It really did. We we really could go on that pale face ass motherfucker, on that fish face looking ass motherfucker. We really could go in on her. Uh, now, I know she was in a relationship with Tupac. I ain't know she fucked Bobby. Mm-mm. But here's the thing, we we we're gonna sit here and we're gonna leave this pale face bitch alone. We're gonna talk about OJ. Now OJ is being granted parole. Now, in 2008, he was sentenced to 33 years for armed robbery, but with a minimum sentence of nine for pretty much stealing his own shit. Pretty much. And he, like I said, this shit was televised, which I don't know why the fuck this shit need to fucking be televised. I said I was out doing my job, so I came back to this shit. Just like, oh, fuck, he on parole? Oh, okay. And he's eligible for parole come October 1st. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Talking about motherfuckers having to lay low. <laughs> I'm not black about it. <laughs> But here's what I'm going to say to OJ. And I'm pretty sure OJ would never watch this on Periscope, but when it's on YouTube. But OJ, I'm going to need for you to do what we all said that Bill Cosby needed to do on the last show. When, you know, Bill Cosby put out that birthday tweet and they drug his ass all the way up and down motherfucking Twitter. Okay. Lay the fuck low. I'm pretty sure he has enough money to where he can comfortably live. Don't sit here, don't write no more books. If I shoulda, woulda, coulda, woulda done it, don't write no more motherfucking books. Okay, stay away from people. Be a fucking recluse. Just enjoy your money, enjoy your kids, enjoy your grandkids. Motherfucker, stay low because here's the thing. I, the main reason that I feel he got locked away is because of the fact that he couldn't get locked up because of the two murder charges, but he was acquitted, okay? <laughs> See, I wasn't gonna say that, but yeah, that that too, they, that too. Very much so. Very the fuck. I'm just saying, but literally just lay the fuck low because at this point, if people were not already gunning for you, they're gunning for you, and if they not finna sit here and scrutinize everything that you say and do, they're going to like. I really just need for OJ to just comment the fuck down. Okay, because I believe he's, what, 70 right now? I don't think his ass should be put in jail no more. No more. I mean, granted, you know, he still looked decent for the nine years that he was in. But if you look at right before he went in, right when he came out, you can tell those nine years aged his face. But again, black don't crack. Unless you don't crack. So I'm going to need for him to just not do it. <laughs> just just not do it. Just just lay the fuck low. Just just lay the fuck low. That's that's all that I can really say about it. It's just lay the fuck low. You you feel what I'm saying? And I know people mad that he got off. Well, guess what, motherfucker? He got off. Shit, motherfuckers get all motherfuckers get off all the motherfucking time. That ain't black. So miss me. <laughs> really, Jay Walker. <laughs> but you ain't never lie. You ain't never lie. Like he really just needs to lay low. I need for OJ to, to do that, not just for me, but for every motherfucking bite. Just, just, just lay low. All right. So, it, it unfortunately it was. All right. So I only have three stories, and one of the three stories, like honestly, I'm not gonna go that deep into the next three stories <laughs> with divorce. Oh my god, yeah, and you know what, oh, it was a real shit, like, and, and one other thing that I want to say to, to Pimpin' is, look, look, man, it was some real shit, you, you have to make it to October 1st, okay, that's, that right there is what, about a good six, about five, six weeks, bro, you just gotta survive, Tropic Thunder, survive, that's all you gotta do is survive, so look, motherfucker, if a motherfucker take your honey bun, if a motherfucker take your cornbread, okay? If a motherfucker run up on you the wrong way, I'ma just need for you to sit here and turn every motherfucking cheek you got and just survive, okay, into the first, okay? We don't need you shanking a motherfucker because somebody sat here, you know, stole your motherfucking honey bun and your motherfucking cornbread and shit. It ain't that serious, OJ? It ain't that serious? I'm just saying. All right, so 
Let's talk about the other than um. <laughs> let's talk about the other three motherfuckers. <laughs> okay, sorry, they said. So it's been four motherfuckers who done been in the news this week. OJ was one of them. So now we'll get to motherfucker number two, Kevin Hart. So allegedly, <clears throat> Kevin was cheating. As that's that's what was that was put out there. Now there was a picture that I guess depending on how you look at it, it would look as if he was because it was him and a woman in a vehicle. But the video actually came out, and it appears that either he or she was either front seat, back seat, but they were not sitting together. There was and there was someone else in the car, so they were actually in the driver's side, and there was no fucking foul play. And of course, you know. Motherfuckers be looking for a reason to sit here and slam me. I was shit not. Let's be clear. Had he cheated on the old girl, I wouldn't have felt no kind of way. And here's and here's why. <clears throat> the way you get them is the way you fucking lose them. <clears throat> Let's be all the way fucking clear. The way you get them is the way you lose them. All right. So if you got so the fact that he cheated on Tori with you. <laughs> I'm done. I'm fucking done. <laughs> oh shit. But truly, the way you get them is the way you lose them. Okay, truly. <clears throat> and old girl need to be sitting back just like, <clears throat> I'm not saying waiting, but. And the only reason I got this head on y'all because my hair look a hot fucking mess because I went to bed without putting do-rag on. My shit look a hot fucking mess, so I got the head on. <clears throat> but she should really be on the lookout just like, you know what? Now, a lot of people will say he didn't cheat because he and Tori were already on the outs. And depending on how you look at it, some people look at it like he didn't cheat. Me, like I said, I'm that motherfucker where until you are legally divorced, if you fuck with somebody, motherfucker, you cheating. Okay, point blank in the motherfucking period. You know, you feel what I'm saying, and, and it just is what the fuck it is. You feel me? So, if she were to have gotten cheated on, true. Now, if she gets cheated on, you can't be mad at nobody but your motherfucking self because you were an instrument in breaking up. Not necessarily breaking up, but you were an instrument in part of the demise of a marriage. Okay, and I mean again, you know, it's it's, it's Sunday morning, so I, I guess I can sit here and I can go ahead and give y'all a little bit uh, uh, of the Bible. Okay, <clears throat> because the Bible says, I believe it's in Hosea. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it says, if you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. Yes, praise God. And uh, in the in the book of Galatia. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man so if that shall he also reap. Now, I'm Jewish, but I still know the, the New Testament because, you know, I was raised Baptist. My mother's Baptist and my father's Catholic, okay? So, with that being said, you can't sow seeds of discord and don't think that you're not going to reap that same harvest in your own life. Now, again, I don't know if that's meant for somebody right now or if somebody's going to watch the shit on the replay. But I'm just saying, you cannot sow seeds of discord into somebody's life. And don't think you're not going to sit here and reap that motherfucking harvest. It don't work like that, okay? And we all know karma is a bitch. Shade is her sister. And karma's going to get you when you least expect it. And it's probably going to get you at the fucking pentacle of your success of where you are alive. When that shit going to come and come in like a motherfucking wrecking ball. Hashtag Miley Cyrus. And that's all I got to say about it. <clears throat> but Kevin was not cheating. And now, Kevin could have left the shit alone, but, you know, he he had a couple posts. I'm, I'm going to see if I can pull the shit up. Let me see if I can find it. I got a whole, whole lot of shit up right here. <clears throat> and um and, and um, now that I've done that, we can pass around the collection plate. Uh, the doors of the church is uh, now open. Okay. <laughs> but Kevin has said, posted this on his um IG, at the end of the day, you got to laugh at the BS. What you do? What you do? I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at him. And it's kind of crazy. He made a meme of himself. But, bruh, go ahead on and do the shit. And I think he had one more. Oh, well, ain't got it. So, he pretty much laughing the shit off. Okay. So, Kevin, with a T on the end, Kevin, I hope and pray that the shit ain't true. And, <laughs> and I hope, and I hope. And right quick, 
the, the quote that I just did, that wasn't me. If you watch the Legends panel, Mar the girl, the person, the person that plays Mariah Carey, that is Mariah Carey's quote. So that's where I got that from. Okay, I don't want nobody to sit here and think that oh shit, I, can, I didn't come up with it. I'm just, I'm just quoting somebody. I'm just quoting somebody. All right, y'all. So now Ursha, Ursha's out here letting it burn. Okay. All right. It's seven a dot. It's seven o'clock on the dot, and his crotch hot from his STD. Like I don't know what is going on. Okay. He was like, ooh, 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 can you feel me burning? And I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> like, it, this is one of those where another situation that I really can't feel bad for. For a few people, yes, but not really. So, we all know he was married to Tamika and shit. Now, come to find out, the bitch he didn't burned was the bridesmaid. And that was even a story that had, uh, I guess, picked up steam some years ago. So she is the one that is saying that, well, he burned me and shit. <laughs> Could be more. And it, it take on a brand new set of meetings right now. Let it burn, baby. Let it burn. Now, and, and again, here, here's some shit that I, I don't understand. Now, I'm not going to say <clears throat> once a cheater, always a cheater. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but what I will say is if this motherfucker didn't had a whole fucking album talking about his confessions and shit. Yeah, and I, yeah, you see, you gotta let me get to it, but no, that's right. She did say that she saw some, some shit coming off the tip of his dick that looked like coolant, <clears throat> but he said it was okay. Again, bitch, where? When is that shit ever the fuck okay? Like, granted, you may not have a dick, okay, so you don't know, but I can tell you right now from a man's perspective, <clears throat> If there is any kind of fucking discharge, okay, now, if the motherfucker just got done pissing <clears throat> and it's still dripping, that shit happens, okay? I understand that, you know, women, after y'all get done, you know, using the bathroom, y'all got to take a paper towel, pat, pat. <clears throat> That's one thing, okay? What a motherfucking dude bust a nut, of course, there's, you know, going to be a little bit of residual coming off of that. <clears throat> but green? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Shit was nasty, unsanitary. This is one of the moments where you probably should have been like, mm -mm -mm -mm, let, me, let, me, let me see you fucking uh, doctor records when the last time you got checked. Mm -mm, I, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Better yet, you know how the fuck he get now. You know that he fucking cheated on Chili. He dedicated a whole fucking song to cheating. <laughs> what is the thing? The fact that she is a bridesmaid fucking her best friend, man. Oh, hey, this is why I don't feel bad because you got exactly what the fuck you deserve. Did we again, y'all? Did did we not just get done talking with the other, <laughs> with the other situation? You cannot sow seeds of discord into somebody's relationship into somebody's life and don't think that you not gonna have to reap that same fucking harvest. But tenfold, it's the same fucking thing. <clears throat> so you did that shit. Your ass got burned. Now, you have people going on Tamika Foster's page, and she pretty much had to make this shit clear. Like, look, miss me with the bullshit. Don't bring your ass over here. This ain't got shit to do with me. <clears throat> yeah, they don't. And from what I understand, I don't know if it's she that got paid, but I know that was like a $1.1 $1 .1 million settlement, but I think that was to his ex, and we don't know who that ex was. But you do have somebody, I think it's like a second person that has come out the woodwork saying that, you know, he did to her, and now it's $10 million she's requested. I'm just like, damn. And if that ain't it, y'all, Lisa Bloom has now come out saying that it is other women that came out. And y'all know Lisa Bloom, and I think her mama, what's her name, Gloria Allred. You know, any time it's a motherfucking situation involving a bitch, they gonna jump the fuck up on it. Okay? <clears throat> they gonna jump that they gonna be on that shit so motherfucking quick. They gonna be on a motherfucking pony on a motherfucking stallion, ride up into this motherfucking fight with a sword in their hand, ready to sit here and chop down some motherfucking heads. They coming for your earth. They coming for you. And this is what happened when you can't keep your motherfucking dick in your ass, bro. <clears throat> this is what happened. And on some real shit, if you wanna sit here and be a hoe, <laughs> they about to get his ass. But my thing is, if you wanna sit here and be a hoe, nigga, don't be married. Don't be married. It's, it's that fucking simple. <clears throat> if you know that's the type of dude you is, don't fucking be married. And if you're going to be married, then you and your wife need to have a fucking agreement. 
And chances are, I think, and I'm pretty sure he is married. I'm pretty sure <clears throat> who he with now that probably is an agreement that she that he can do whatever he wants to do. And you got some people that they 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 will be in a relationship because well you know what that's Ursha. He got all his money, so he gonna do his thing. I'm gonna do my thing. <laughs> he better do something. He best to do something because they they about to get that ass. <laughs> if he is, hey, it's what the fuck. It's what the fuck he get. And of course, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if one person came out the woodwork, of course it's gonna be others. It's no different than. <clears throat> and I ain't saying nobody right and wrong in any situation, but like the Michael Jackson situation, when that first person came forward saying that, oh, he did me wrong, there was a slew of other fucking people coming in, because like, you know what, we're going to sit here, we're going to lie so we can get some motherfucking money off of them. The same thing with the oh, with um the Bill Cosby thing. I'm not saying that Bill didn't do it, because Bill even said, hey, we I did this shit back in the day, other people were fucking doing it. But I don't think he did it to all those fucking women. You feel what I'm saying? But again, he admitted, yeah, I fucking did it. It's what the fuck it is. But you see how a slew of people came out at one time trying to get him. <laughs> a lifetime. <laughs> mm. Wait for it. We we gonna see. We but but what's been happening is you finna have a lot of motherfuckers coming out the door. You gonna have bitches. Here's the <clears throat> and here's the <clears throat> can, can we can we be honest? I bet you right now, <clears throat> Tamika and Chili sitting with Long Island like this, sipping and clapping hands. You know, they they right now they probably singing Beyonce's. You know, what is it? Best that I never had. I think that's the song. They probably singing. You know, thank God you blew it. Thank God I dodged the bullet. I'm so over you. Good looking now. They probably doing that shit. Right the fuck now, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be mad at him. Oh, she did. She did. Told them smooth get the fuck off my shit with this. <clears throat> I'm in a better place. This ain't got shit to do with me because you have a lot of people that want her to go the fuck in. But that's that one thing when you got that piece about your life where it's like that shit don't even involve me. And again, that's one of the situation where I'm gonna let the lower handle it because that ain't got shit to do with me. My name ain't even know it. My name. <clears throat> but I'm looking at Ursha like, Ursh, Ursh, come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. We can't wrap it up before we slap it up, bruh. Really? Really? I can't. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, for real, for real. <clears throat> took, took the kids. The other one died. You are so fucking right. So she probably just sitting back. It's like, you know what? <clears throat> You get you get what you got. You get what you deserve. <clears throat> I mean, they did, but here's the thing: regardless of whatever happened, <clears throat> it takes two to tangle. And if Ursha decides to act out, Ursha decides to act out. He he grown, mind you. She was older than him, but you grown. You feel what I'm saying? So it wasn't her. It was him. <clears throat> <laughs> hey man. Hey, look, look, look. I feel what you're saying, and most of y'all don't know this, so I'm going to share a little something about my life, but this is why I've been abstinent for the past 16 fucking years. So, I ain't got to fucking worry about shit like that. What's up? What's up, the Queen of uh, Triple H? How you doing? Well, I mean, I get tested every year. By virtue of my job, I have to get tested every year, but I don't even have to fucking worry about that because, like I said, I, again, I've been abstinent for the fucking past 16 years, and motherfucker asked me who you had sex with. I'll be like, look, I know my left hand and my right hand very well. And it, and like I said, if something happened outside of these two motherfuckers right here, uh, then shit, I'm just as surprised as you are. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So, hey, it, it, like I said, people are like, it, it, people going to do what they want to do. People going to take chances. And there's a good chance that. When she saw that fucking tip dripping, she was probably like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get paid for this shit. That's probably what it was. But again, you get what you get. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you see this shit dripping. <clears throat> well, here's the thing. You see, I said abstinent and not celibate. Now, I, I couldn't be celibate because I, I would have went crazy. I would have been in jail by now. I would have put my hands on some motherfucking body. Because y'all know the difference. You know, celibate when there is no sexual nothing going on. Abstinence is just when you not fucking somebody else, okay? 
Well, I mean, of course she's stupid. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Okay. Alright, so. There's one last story. Now, there is so much with this last story. I'm not going into details. Okay. But. If y'all want the lowdown and everything in chronological order and whatnot, y'all can go to YouTube, <clears throat> type in Lovely T, which is T-I, 2002. She got all that shit chronicalized, okay? <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm going to just talk about it because the shit's ridiculous. Like, I'm out of, like, my last flashcard right now is just a congratulations. We talking about R. Kelly. We, 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 talk, we talking about the Pied Piper. An uh, hour be it. Uh, now, they're saying that Pippin has a fucking sex cult. I don't think people really understand what a cult is. Oh shit, it's about to rain? Oh fuck. Like, I'm sorry, that do me all. I just heard a like a fucking thunder in this shit. It's about to rain outside. Okay. My bad. <laughs> But saying that he has fucking sex code, and they were saying that it is with underage women. But it has thus come out that the women or the particular female in question that is there, they are all of legal age. Okay. And you have <clears throat> people coming out, a close friend or a close source to R. Kelly saying that with the particular situation, he has a methodical way of trapping these women so he will entice them with a lifestyle get them accustomed to a lifestyle he will take their phone away from them and he is very strict and certain about how they dress how they act what they eat what they do and everybody says that this is brainwashing and i don't think that is brainwashing because also rishi you really you can't brainwash the willing you feel what i'm saying you cannot brainwash brainwash the willing and you have a lot of females like less. Uh, if the females are involved, let's be clear. Most of them probably want to aspire to bigger and better things, and most of them just like, okay, well, the motherfucker buy me bags, buy me cars, got me fucking living like this and whatnot. So all I gotta do is just eat like this that he wanted to, act like this, and just you know throw this ass up in a circle, you know, pop, poke the ass up and shit when he want me to. You have those that really want to fucking do it, and even if we go all the way back to him pissing on a little girl. Shit, fucking Riley off the boondock said the best. If the bitch didn't want to get pissed on, she would have moved the hell out the way. And then in the court session, and old girl like, if I didn't want, he was like, this is uh, R. Kelly, pop, pop, R. B. Hell, if I didn't want to get pissed on, I move the hell out the way. So people know what the fuck they are doing. And everybody keeps saying, oh, well, they're young, they're young, they're young. Wish they y'all, well, the ones way back when are young. But let's be clear. Hey, here's the thing, shit. If you sitting here paying money and whatnot, you you better have their ass on some strict motherfucking rules. But what I'm going to say is this, though. If y'all think about it way back when in the day, more or less, I can say, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm going to have me a boondocks marathon going on momentarily after this. But more or less in the Judaic culture, but it actually, uh, you know, kind of spread to other cultures. At the age of 13, men were considered, well, well, at the age of 13, you were considered a man. At the age of 13. Now, what they meant in Judaic culture is that at the age of 13, you are responsible for your own sin. So up until the age of 13, so, so from birth up until, you know, 12 years old, whatever sins you committed were on your parents. At the age of 13, your sins are on you. That's what that was. And of course, they were able to marry and all that shit at the motherfucking age 13 and whatnot. And if I'm not saying, I think the girls were considered women, I think at 12, because <clears throat> girls mature faster than men. So that's how that was. And that's why you had a lot of arranged marriages and whatnot way back then. Of course, yes, we have evolved past that. We're at this. Golly, that shit is. That shit's heavy, y'all. I don't know if y'all can hear, but I can hear. But. <clears throat> We can't sit here and pretend like most of them don't know what the fuck going on. God, I'm pretty sure we all remember we was 13, 14, 15, 16. The shit we did, okay? 
Because you, you feel what I'm saying? We thought we was grown, but we knew exactly what the fuck we were doing. Now, the legal age is 18, so they are a fucking age. These girls that he supposedly has, allegedly has, they are a fucking age. Nothing is wrong with it. And the one particular female, and again, I'm generalizing everything because I ain't got time to be saying doing story time with y'all asses. Hell no. I ain't doing it. Okay. But you had a family speaking now talking about some how I guess they, they really don't talk to their daughter this and the third or whatnot. She did a video <clears throat> saying that she was okay and whatnot. Oh, it, it ain't no surprise. I mean, shit, the motherfucking surprise, I'm 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 astounded. But she was saying that she was okay, and there was a point where, you know, you saw a shadow and whatnot. And a lot of people think that was R. Kelly coaching her and whatnot. <clears throat> and a lot of people feel like, well, if she isn't trapped, why doesn't she say where she at? Maybe the fuck she don't want to. And I'm pretty sure most of these females, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to talk about one of, one of my favorite entertainers in the world. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite entertainers. And I'm, I'm going to do a parallel right now. Oh, I, I feel you. But let, let's talk about Miss uh, Miss Anime Bullock, who y'all know as Tina Turner. So she had her situation with Ike, right? She had many opportunities to get the fuck away. She did. She chose to stay for whatever the reasons were. When Tina finally had a fuck enough, okay, and y'all, if y'all ain't never watched what's love got to do with it, I don't know where the fuck you been. Go watch it. Tina with that ass in that limo. Tina with that ass. Tina, Tina and, and what what uh, what vexed me about that? Now it's a tangent. This is a tangent. <laughs> I know, right? This is a tangent. I don't know why the fuck she ain't never put the flip flops on his ass before. Because if y'all look at how Tina was built, Tina Tina was built, baby. I was skinny, <laughs> but I digress. But when she was finally ready to leave, she left. So I'm pretty sure if these girls want to leave, they can leave. Now, mind you, if they leave, they leave him without everything that he has provided them. But if they want to leave, they can fucking leave. And what really pisses me off so fucking much about this shit is let's be fucking clear. R. Kelly ain't doing shit that Hugh Hefner ain't been doing for fucking years. But because he is fucking black, is a fucking issue. Now, let's be clear. I'm not saying Hugh Hefner done fucked underage girls. I'm not fucking saying that. We don't have no fucking, you know, proof of that. Because all the girls that be at the Playboy match has been 18. You feel what I'm saying? Hey. Hey. It is, and, and even with the one girl in particular, her, I think her name is Jocelyn. The father's coming out saying all type of shit. You know, the fucking sister that did a motherfucking diss track and, the and it got produced and shit. And the, and the fucking girl, Jocelyn, even said that her father put her in connections with R. Kelly. Now, let's be clear. Let's be all the way fucking clear. Way back when. No, no, no. There is a rap diss track. There is a rap diss track that is out. I ain't been fucking listen to it, but it's out there. So you got people trying to sit here and make a come up on this. Let's be fucking clear. And there's even a portion where the father is like going off on a tirade. But in the background, you have his vehicle that is blasting music. So this is not like, I'm so rich, this is nothing but a fucking come up. Nothing but a fucking come up. And I think the sister that, that, that did the diss track is probably just mad because R. Kelly, R. Kelly chose her sister over her. That's probably all the fuck that this is. But let's not sit here and overlooked the fact that the father then sat here and put her in cahoots with R. Kelly. Let's let us not sit here and fucking forget that. And we all we all know what we all have seen what the fuck been going on with R. Kelly for years. We're at this point in time where if Michael Jackson was still alive, I don't know if Michael touched the kids or not. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But how many of y'all gonna let y'all motherfucker, you know, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old go over to Michael Jackson's house. I wait. In my cat Williams was I wait. Exactly, pimping them out. So with that being said, if y'all not feeling y'all kids to fucking Michael Jackson house. 
And y'all heard everything that's been going on with R. Kelly. And even saw the video footage of him pissing that little girl. Why would you even want to put your fucking children in that? Why? So right there, that shows fucked up parenting where it's like, you're willing to sit here and sacrifice your own daughter. And motherfucker, for what? For what? Now, I'm not going to say that R. Kelly brainwashed her, any of these girls. But I can say that it does seem as if he is grooming them. And it's probably going to be that tall tale sign of how most, you know, fucked up men are, which is like, you know, because you have a lot of men that you, to sit here and control women, they will sit here and give and give and give and make sure their names ain't on shit and make it clear that when you leave or if you decide to leave, none of this is yours because all of this is mine. I can take it back whenever the fuck I want to. To sit here and control them. There is a difference between being controlling and being brainwashed. There is a complete fucking difference because you cannot brainwash the willing. Let's, let's fucking be, let's be very, you can't fucking do that shit. Yes, definitely groom they fucking victims. But it's but it wasn't, ain't nobody but what people are not talking about is the fact that the father put this shit into motion, put this shit into play, and that's what is very, very fucking upsetting. And I mean that's really all the fuck that I really gotta say about the R. Kelly thing. I mean, like I said, if y'all want the details and the play by plays again, Lovely T two thousand two on YouTube, she got you. She gonna hook you up right quick. Okay. <clears throat> Hey, I mean, I feel you. I I, I feel you. <clears throat> but it is what it is. We can't pretend as if we didn't know about this shit and, you know, what the fuck our Doc Kelly been doing. Now, that's all that I really have to say. I mean, there are other things that have been going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. That I ain't for talking about because I don't feel like talking about. Because it don't mean shit to me. Okay. But what we will do is we're going to go ahead and wrap this up with the uh, congrats. And you guys get to tell me who's going to take the W of the week and who's going to take the L of the week. And we have many different candidates <laughs> for who's going to take the L. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Let me go ahead and get these congrats out the way. Okay. So congrats to Jay-Z. His uh, album has... <laughs> I said, wait, now. <laughs> Y'all... <laughs> His album 444, it was a uh, certified platinum last week. Well, uh, I, I'm sorry, black men taking the L. I'm not taking no fucking L this week. I'm sorry, <laughs> but his album was certified platinum last week. His album is now number one on Billboard Top 200. So congrats to him. Terrence Howard celebrates his son Hero Valentino's um, uh, first birthday. So he's one year old this week. So congrats. Will Smith has been casted as Genie in uh, the Aladdin remake, so congrats to him. Cynthia Bailey, <laughs> just saying, um, apparently has a new boo. He's a motivational speaker called Will Jones. I don't know, I smell plot line to stay on the show, but if it's not, congrats to Miss Cynthia Bailey. You know, she fine, she can get it. Um, rapper Tyga has been casted in MTV Scream. For season three, so he needs some money because he's been cut off from, uh, you know, Kylie Jenter. But uh, congrats to him. Fantasia celebrates her uh, anniversary. I think it's been three years, so congrats to Fantasia. And this motherfucking flies in my damn half place. And I'm. <sighs> Give me a flash water. And finally, Taraj P. Henson is uh, set to star in a movie called Proud Mary. So congrats to everybody. If this week so now formally um, i got my, i got i got i got my, i got my stuff so we're we gonna tally we're gonna tally so dub okay for a w okay okay I, i'm putting both so for one w i got colin for an l i see you put earth but we're gonna do w's first we're gonna do w's we'll do w's so i got i got you for colin <laughs> y'all can't let me do it okay Fuck it, we're gonna do L's first, damn it. We're gonna do L's first. We're gonna take the L of the week. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Look, y'all, this y'all show, and I, I, I got it, but, but damn, can we have a little bit of order in the palace? Shout out to Mama D. Let's end, okay, let's end positivity. Okay, 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 okay. I got, I got three for Ursha. I got, I got three for Ursh.
<laughs> Everybody just say Ursh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so so I, I I think it's unanimous that that Ursh is gonna get the L of the week. Who gonna take the W of the week? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ain't nobody said this shit. This shit is fucking funny, but I, I love you guys. I, I love this. Okay, Colin. So, so I'm guessing Colin gets the W what, for 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 some slight light shade, indirect shade. Is that is that what we doing? Okay. So it appears that the L of the week is going to Ursha, Ursha Raymond. The W of the week is going to Colin Kaepernick. So what I want to say to you guys is thank you guys so, so much for tuning in with me this week. Uh, like I said, for the next three weeks, I'm probably going to be missing in action from how I was looking Monday through Friday. Not next, like this week right here. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. But the upcoming three weeks from how I was looking Monday through Friday, I'm going to be out in the woods, in the trees, you know, in, you know, playing, you know, playing in the woods and shit. But we're supposed to pack up Fridays, come back, and then go back out. Thank you, thank you. And go back out and do this shit again. So I should still be able to come back and do the trending topics. Fingers crossed, because, you know, shit changes what, how the fuck I, I operate over here. And for the reviews, like I said, at a minimum, I'm going to do Love Hip Hop Hollywood. If I have to get a shit to y'all ass some motherfucking Saturday or Sunday, y'all will get them. Because y'all know I'm here for fucking Moniz, okay? I'm here for Moniz. Now, I'm be mad if Moniz will sit here and snatch a motherfucker this damn season now, okay? I'm going to be mad, but we're going to see. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching me live on Periscope. For those who are on YouTube, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys next week. Everybody watch it. Have a blessed week, all right? I mean that. I want you guys to come back, and I need you guys in full health and everything for, we, for us to come back, shade, and all other good shit. So... Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.